Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 25 August 2015 and got a little knife review for you that comes with a story. There's a shocker on this channel, huh? Some of you traditional knife collectors, aficionados, and fans will recognize the packaging. <clears throat> We're looking at a knife from WR Case and Sons this evening. Not just any old case knife either. This one would be the limited production, one of 300 Case Bose Collaboration Laney's Clip Knives. Yeah, let's just see how proud Case is of this product. The box says there's nothing like the feel of a case knife in your hand. Durable, strong, and beautifully designed. Our handcrafted knives are in a class of their own, which is one reason why they've been passed down from generation to generation and sought after by collectors from all over the world for an authentic American-made work of art. Nothing compares to a case. Bold words from our friends in Bradford, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Let's see if the knife lives up to them, shall we? In the box, we get this beautiful suede, padded, zippered case for the case. It comes with, oddly, two identical pamphlets, one in the box, one inside the case. Uh, product quality information, a cheesy uh, light paper folded map style propaganda sheet, and this raggedy piece of tissue paper. Um, now this knife I bought on the secondary market, but it was essentially new in box. You can see where the shipping oil has sort of discolored and degraded the tissue paper. Um, frankly, this is not adequate for a four inch long, over three ounce beefy traditional. Um, I hear you can buy heavy gauge waxed paper in which to ship your knives. Seems like another company in Pennsylvania does. Hmm. <clears throat> Might want to invest in a better quality paper. Okay, that aside. Uh, let's look inside, shall we? Ooh. Ooh. This is the Case Bose limited production Lanny's clip in antique jigged bone now, some sites retailers refer to this as a peach seed jig bone I don't really see that what I see is a deeply jigged bone over a saw cut surface I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up there you can right in this area so it's a saw cut slab and then jig. There you go. <clears throat> and it's beautifully done. It looks old. It looks rustic. It looks, you know, not to rip off another case term, but it looks pocket worn. It's just beautiful. The shield on the knife <laughs> is called the pawn shield, as in a chess pawn. Um, I think some guy on Instagram, his name might have been Rob, referred to that as the Fleur de Testicles shield. <laughs> Gee, how did he see that? Hmm. It is a rather <laughs> bold, dare we say, ballsy shield. <laughs> I gotta love it. Uh, okay, let's talk about the knife a little bit and the history of this knife. It is a case Bose collaboration. The designer Tony Bowes. From just southwest of Indianapolis, here in my home state of Indiana, Tony Bowes is the inventor of the Lanny's clip. Uh, I think back in the early 90s, he had a buddy named Lanny who needed a heavy duty traditional pocket knife, and this is what Tony came up with for him the Lanny's clip. And Although uh, Mr. Bose is the original designer, I will say, in the 20 teens, if you are a custom traditional knife maker, uh, you have to make a Lanny's clip 
<laughs> to be considered for greatness and your interpretation and execution of the Lanny's clip in large part determines your salt, your value, your standing in the custom traditional knife making community. This is a reference knife. It's, uh, well, the Tony Bowes Lanny's clip, the custom version of which sells for north of $2,000 if you can get one is to the traditional pocket knife of 2015 uh, what the Chris Reeves Sabenza is to the modern tactical folder. It is the yardstick. The well, if you know you got to make a titanium frame lock if you're a custom maker of modern tactical folders, and you got to do it well. If you're a custom maker of traditional pocket knives, you got to do a Lanny's clip, and you got to do it well. <clears throat> so. What did I say? A Tony Bowes custom Lanny's clip is north of $2,000. So why all the buzz about this case collaboration? Man, I, look, I was looking at forum threads back to 2012 where guys were talking about the arrival of this knife. Panting for it. Because not $2,000, I believe when they... When these 300 knives were originally released, they were a tick under $400. There might be a, an online retailer where you can find probably a pre-owned one in new in-box condition for in the mid threes. Some guys now are selling them on the forums for as little as you know low to mid twos. Uh, there are some reasons for that, even though there are 300 of them made, designed and supervised by Tony Bowes himself in the sort of case custom shop production facility. There's a reason they're not holding their value very well, and we'll get to that. But let's talk dimensions first. Closed length. Uh, mine measures a tick under four inches, actually about three and fifteen sixteenths, but the knife is listed at four inches. There's a reason mine might be a little undersized that we'll also get to later. The blade. 3 and 1 32nd, just a tick over 3 inches long. A gorgeous clip blade. Flat ground in saber fashion with a big swooping cut swedge. A graceful, graceful swedge curve, isn't it? See how it's almost convex or humped up here and then it swoops. And recurves at the point very nice an interesting plug plunge grind sort of a signature feature of the Lanny's clip the plunge is not dead vertical uh, it doesn't make a 90 to the to the top of the main bevel it's uh, sort of curved and angled which obviously presented us some issues in the plunge grind Ricasso area I've looked at lots of pictures of custom Tony Bowes Lanny's clips. They don't have this issue. You guys know what I'm talking about if you've been watching the channel. See where the plunge grind terminates. See where the edge terminates. See how the Ricasso is not quite right. <clears throat> okay, blade stock is an eighth of an inch. Same thickness as a Sabenza 21. Thick stuff. Uh, <laughs> For comparison, let's kind of set this up next to a knife lots of you are familiar with, the Great Eastern Cutlery number 47 Viper. Handle length is, oh gosh, maybe 3 sixteenths longer on the Lanny's clip. And let's set them bolster to bolster. Blade length, maybe a sixteenth of an inch longer on the Laney's clip. But look at the difference in blade stock. <clears throat> About a hundred thousandths on the Viper on the left and an eighth of an inch, 125 thousandths on the Laney's clip. This is a pretty large traditional folder. Not ridiculously large, but not small. Bigger than midsize. Uh, 2.6, 2.7 ounces. Our Laney's clip was in at a robust 3.2 uh, materials on this knife 
as we discussed, it's cow bone, antique jigged bone. The blade is of, can you see it? Let's see. Yes, 154 cm. Not messing around. No case of CV carbon steel, no true shark 420HC. We've got some modern super steel going on here. And you don't see any brass or nickel silver either. The entire frame and back spring crafted of 154CM. Now, I originally thought, and in some online discussions, may have said that the bolster and liner frame is one piece, but it's not. The bolsters are standard construction. If I hold this just right, you can see the line of demarcation between bolster and liner. It is not a uh, one-piece sort of monolithic frame. Standard bolsters. Look at the finishing inside this blade well. Everything is precision ground, even the inside of the liners. And if you look closely, I think you can see it, if I can get some focus. Right in this area you see a step. And you'll also see, as you look right adjacent to the blade, you can see that sort of uh, arc, that radius, where just like the Lockback Whitler, Tony Bowes case collaboration of How About the Truths that we looked at on this channel, the frame has washers milled into it so that the blade tang does not ride on the full surface of the liners. This allows the knife to be smooth and not to be uh, marked up as it pivots through its arc in areas that you can see. The only areas that the frame makes contact with the blade tang are always hidden. So as the knife ages and gets used, you'll never see any radial marks in that blade tang. Pretty cool. Now why is this knife such an icon? Why is it so revered? Uh, why why does the design resonate with so many collectors? Well, there is nothing sexier than a perfectly pro proportioned, perfectly executed clip point blade in a folding knife. There just isn't. And this one is perfect. It's got ideal proportions with a little new twist, a little modern detail back here in the plunge grind and ricasso and kick area. It's just different, isn't it, than we're used to seeing. And it works. And then there's the shape of the handle, which in any grip, including the saber grip, which most traditional knives do not excel in, this knife is comfortable and locked into the hand like no other traditional pocket knife I've ever held. In the draw cut grip, it's not bad. In this grip, it's sort of draw cut ripping grip. It's phenomenal. And in the One Else Pub Samurai grip, the most powerful and most controlled way of gripping almost any knife, it is awesome. The way that the the way that this downturned butt locks in with the pinky and forces it up into the meat of your hand, the knife in either the saber or that pinch grip is so locked in, you have so much power and control. It's just amazing for a traditional knife. So the package, the envelope, the design, the materials are unbelievable. It's great that you can buy one for what, a fifth of the cost of a Tony Bowes custom. <clears throat> but there's a little problem. Uh, I felt like I had deja vu when I bought this knife. And I actually, I'm not going to run the seller under the bus. He was selling it on consignment for a buddy of his who was having some real financial problems. It was a good price. But I did ask some specific questions. I guess I didn't ask specific enough questions. He did say in his listing that the knife had been back to case once for side play in the blade. And I said, you know, does it have any other issues? You know, blade centering, wonky grinds, anything like that? Nope, nope, nope. If it wasn't a good one, he said, I wouldn't have spent the time to send it back to case 
to get reworked. Well, when I got the knife, I sort of had deja vu. <clears throat> we got a big, old, storied, famous knife company with a great reputation for quality who's making a limited production knife in, what, 2013, 2014 these were made? Uh, sort of an homage to a classic pattern and it was pretty expensive compared to the rest of their product line. Does that remind you of anything? Yeah, me too. How about that Buck 110 Loxa? A $200 Buck 110 with an S30V blade, G10 handle scales, and a reversible tip up pocket clip. Uh, <laughs> and you guys can go back into my archive and read about this knife or wa uh, watch videos about this knife it wasn't pretty it required some work to be the beauty that it is now <clears throat> well the same with this knife uh, I almost made a scathing video of this knife before I sent it back to case for a second time but I didn't um, Case has an unbelievable reputation for warranty work and the, the, what comes out of their repair center. So I sent it back, and in a week, less than a week, they'd received it and made the repairs and had it on its way back to me. And here's what we were dealing with. Um, let's see, we'll start with the blade. This uh, graduation line from the spine to where the clip starts, as you can see, it's doggone near perfectly perpendicular now. Um, it was off at about a five degree angle that way when I got the knife. Uh, the bolsters were raggedy at best. The finishing and the straightness of the rat tail flutes were horrible. This corner right here um, was protruding and sharp. these beautiful antique jig bone covers. As you look at them now, they look nice and symmetrical. When I got the knife, uh, not the case. The radiuses were way different from one side to the other. Because of that, the perceived thickness of the covers was way off. There was a big gap right here between the back spring and the liner on the left side as you're looking at the spine. I could fit a corner of a piece of notebook paper in there and wiggle it around, it was so bad. If you held it up to a light and looked through the blade well, it would blind you with the light coming through that gap. Um, at the butt of the knife, as you looked across it, see how nice and square it is now? As received, it was again off kilter to about 10 degrees, and as you turned the knife around, the high side moved. <laughs> so it started off with the right side high, and as you turn the knife around like this, uh, it became high on the left side. It was just horrendous. Um, after my uh, shop tour at Great Eastern Cutlery, <clears throat> I thought, man, there's no way Dick would ever let that knife uh, out of his area. You know, he, no way Dick would have let that $70 knife out of his area looking like that. Um, I think that about covers it, but isn't that enough? on a $400, 300-piece limited production sort of semi-custom collaboration knife. Um, I think, you know, much like Buck, these knives were brought to market with a little bit of overblown hype <clears throat> and overstated quality, And when in reality, both companies knew most guys were going to collect them. They were going to uh, zip them up in their suede cases or put them in their uh, display case coffee table and maybe sell them for a profit at some point down the road and very few people were going to look at them with a discerning eye and put them to use. <clears throat> oh, by the way, as received after being to case once to have side play corrected, it was still there. Um, so, I did write a detailed repair order for Case's repair department and they did well. I mean, they did really well. Take a look at the finishing in the rat tail flutes and the straightness and the symmetry with which they terminate. They did well. 
uh, my gap between liner and back spring focus focus the gap is gone the squareness of my butt grind is great blade centering as you're looking at it might favor the right side as you're looking at it just a bit it kind of depends how you close it see it right now it looks perfectly centered side play completely gone absolutely rock solid and let's look at the walk and talk do we get the uh, do we get any of that road runner bounce at half stop yeah we do just a little and a solid clunk closing nothing wrong with that sounds like quality to me they redeemed themselves um, I dare say and you know I've held in my hand and done some work on several of the case bows collaboration knives as this one sits it's sort I, I call this BNIB better than new in box this might be <laughs> the most well done case bows Lanny clip Lanny's clip in existence maybe um, it's awfully nice just awfully awfully nice What a great size. You know, if I'm carrying this knife, I don't really know that I'm going to feel the need for a modern folder that day. I got to try this. This knife is new in box. Never cut anything. Never been sharpened except at the factory. Well, let's see how they do. I got a I have a uh, uh, I have a prediction. Um, I think this edge is for display only. Let's see. What? Well, make a liar out of me. It's cutting matches shooter supply catalog paper. It's a little chunky, but it's kind of doing it. Out by the tip, it's pretty doggone sharp. It's snaggy and toothy and. But, you know, what the heck? I've seen worse. And remember, guys, most people aren't going to use these. That is the dilemma for me. As you might expect, I'm not much of a safe queen guy, am I? So what shall I do? We have a very ergonomic knife made of materials which are designed to be used, to be cut with, to be resharpened to an unbelievably keen edge, 154 cm. We got a robust stainless steel frame, a beautifully designed, strong, slick pivot, a pocket worn, jigged bone finish. But it could be worth, you know, three, four times what I paid for it in 10 years. Who knows? What will I do? What will I do? What will I do? Well, guys, did he or didn't he? <laughs> I can't keep you in suspense forever. This knife's too valuable to put an aftermarket edge on it, isn't it? It needs to sit in a safe. and not be touched, not be used, not be carried until it can appreciate and become an investment. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, uh, not in this house. Get a little macro for you. Of that glistening edge enhanced Ricasso. Flare at the base of the edge is gone. A little recurve is gone. Hmm. 
but will it cut? See if you can hear the difference from last time. Oh yeah. I think Mr. Bose would be proud. I do, I do. That is all for tonight, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and my case Bose Laney's clip that apparently will be mine for some time, are sharp. <laughs>